Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2024 BMW Alpina XB7. This one is finished off in skyscraper gray metallic and the MSRP is $154,000. We have a lot to go over for this very exclusive BMW X7. And we will start underneath the hood where this is powered by the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. It's paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. And this pumps out a whopping 631 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque sent through that X drive all wheel drive system where this also has four wheel steering as well. It weighs in just over 5,900 pounds, but zero to 60 is 3.9 seconds. Top speed is 180 miles an hour. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, you will notice a few subtle changes over a normal X7. First up, Alpina is spelled out in the lower section of the bumper, but everything else is virtually identical with the split housings for the LED headlights and high beams, turn signals and DRLs. And then the kidney grill also has a very nice look to it. With a forward facing camera, there's active grill shutters, and then the vertical bars just give it a great look. There's parking sensors in the lower section, as well as the sensor for the adaptive cruise and a lot of contoured lines and cutouts as well to provide a lot of cooling. So that split lower section of the bumper is very distinctive. And then there's very nice lines that come down the hood. Now, all of the Alpina models come with a set of 23 inch wheels with that multi-spoke design. This also has the blue Alpina brake calipers up front very nice color contrast with this skyscraper gray. Now this also has power folding side mirrors with the camera and the turn signal. There's a full moon roof up top. So it goes all the way back to your third row passengers. And then there's a lot of brushed aluminum accents for the roof racks around the windows and in that lower section too, going off that trim accent behind the rear wheel. I think this has a fantastic look to it. It looks nor like a normal X7, aside from some of those cosmetic differences, of course. And then in back, body colored spoiler with the third brake light, wiper blade down below. There's the dark housings for those LED taillights, backup camera with all the sensors, and then that quad tip dual exhaust down below, which you can remote start. So you can use the key fob to do that. And the X7 in general can also tow right around 7,500 pounds. You do have to have the hitch installed in order to do that, of course. And then you can use the button on the key fob or that one to open up the lift gate. Now there are some programs you can do where you can open up both of these at the same time. For now, I'm just showing them individually here. This model also has the full adaptive suspension so you can raise and lower the rear of it. If you're loading in some items and you want a lower load height, makes it very easy. Or if you wanna sit on the back here and you just want it a little bit lower. It also keeps you away from the bodywork here so that way you don't risk scratching or damaging any of that. And then this is a three row SUV. With the third row up, you get a little bit of space in the back. There is some underneath the floor where the cover is currently installed. So you can at least hide it out of the way. And then all of the seats in the back are automatic. We have a max person, a max storage. You can fold the third row down and then move the second row forwards. And I show in the full review all of that. It's a decent amount of space for this vehicle. There's also a 12 volt and a little bit of storage over on that left side. Now, what I love about these split styles is that you can actually just push on one button for them to both close. You can also lock the vehicle by using the other control there. And then you can also set this vehicle up to unlock all four doors by grabbing one of the front door handles. So that's just not set up at the moment. Now for the interior on this Alpina, we have the Tardufo leather. There's also wood trim, black leather, all the brushed aluminum accents, Bowers and Wilkins audio. And then there are a ton of sunshades that you can adjust from each back seat. We have the one up front, also the one in the rear. There's also two in the door here that you can adjust. So very neat to see that. Now this also has captain's chairs for the second row. And in order to get into the third row, simply just push that backrest forwards and it will start to move that seat. The front seat will adjust if it needs to. And from there, we can hop into the back. At five foot 10, I am actually pretty comfortable. Look at the amount of space right here. We have cup holders, ambient lighting. You can even adjust the third row from back there. So if you need to do that. And we have a lot of lighting. 
We even get heated third row seats with all the climate adjustments up top, our own sunroof, Alcantara for the entire headliner. It's a nice place to be and at my height, I could easily ride around back and quickly hop out. Now when you lock that seat back, it will start to move the entire seat back for you, which is nice. But while it's doing that, let's hop in where we have storage pockets behind both front seats. You can even attach some tablets as needed and charge them. We have heated seats, of course, with all the climate adjustments. There's storage, auxiliaries, cup holders too. And we have the adjustable armrests, so you can move those out of the way, adjust them to your height. With them down, you might be able to walk through here, but it's easier just to move the seat in general. So it's a nice place to be, and I have tons of headroom. So you could be over six feet tall and easily fit in the second row. Now for your driver, you get massaging seats. You also have a button to adjust the front passenger seat as well as the rear seats. There's memory seating controls, all of your controls that you would need in general, and then even more storage and the lift gate release. And then hopping into the front seats, let's start this up where we have the genuine leather steering wheel with green and blue stitching. All of the brushed aluminum accents, there's your cruise control settings, volume and tuning, Bluetooth and voice commands. This does have paddle buttons. I'm not going to call them paddle shifters because it is just a button that you push to upshift and downshift. So we'll see how those work once we get this out on the road. But with the uh, digital gauge cluster here, you can pull up some content just like you can on pretty much every other BMW, even pull up the augmented reality. However, with this model, you can even pull up Alpina at the top. So if you wanna see that in view, you can, and you can also adjust the rest of this layout depending on how you would like to see it. Last up is the head-up display, so you can scroll through all of that as needed as well. Now on this left side, lots of storage, you have all the headlight adjustments, leather covers the entire dash, and for the infotainment system, you have the nav on the right side and a few things you can scroll through on the left side. You can also get into your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you have your seats, messages, anything that you need, you can scroll through right there. There's even the climate adjustments, which allow you to get into the heated and ventilated seats, as well as the heated steering wheel. And then you have your navigation phone and music that you can quickly get into. Really nice wood trim accent underneath that. And XB7 also is an illuminating logo over on that passenger side with some very nice intricate trim accents behind that. There's two air vents, power and volume for the, the radio as well as tuning and some defrosters. And then once you open up this wood trim cover, we have wireless charging in the back with some auxiliaries and heated and cooled cup holders, which is great to see. Now on the crystal rotary dial with Alpina in it, you can actually use this to further go through this information as well as use all the shortcuts to get into what you need to. Now with the shifter, let's push it forwards for reverse where we have the 360 camera system. You can go through all these angles, which is very helpful, including the 360 one. And then you can have drive and then the manual setting as well. Park is located on the back. And then on this left side, there's traction control as well as the parking sensors. And you have a few different driving modes that you can get into. Sport mode is going to make the exhaust a little bit deeper. And then there's comfort mode too. There's also a downhill assist control, auto hold and the e-brake, and then the adaptable suspension so you can raise and lower this vehicle. A little bit of storage in the center armrest as well as in the glove box there. And then we have the dome lights and all the controls for those sunshades up in the top there. And you have a lot of glass, so it's very easy to see even though this is a long three row SUV. And in sport mode, second gear, here we go. I will say the buttons on the back side of the steering wheel are actually pretty responsive and impressive. So while it's not that big paddle shifter, it is cool that you can use them. If I was buying this X7, I would want to use them. I, I like performance oriented vehicles and on a vehicle like this, using the paddles is just something that gives you that added sporty vibe for something that is geared towards being so luxurious. And the fact that we have this much horsepower, this is almost 6,000 pounds. So we have plenty of power to get this up, to merge into traffic, just to have fun. <laughs> that exhaust sounds good too. Uh, or to tow. If you wanted to tow with this, you have the ability to do that. I believe you can spec this with the hitch if you would like to, but you're really buying this for having that 
fully loaded and exclusive SUV. So the XB7, this might be the second one I've ever seen in person. Uh, third one actually, because Hendrick currently has two of them on their showroom floor. And this is something that you just don't see often. You really got to know what it is or understand what the Alpina badge means from the exterior to know what kind of SUV this is. But this is what it's like to drive the XB7. Honestly, from this angle, it's really no different than a normal X7. And I don't have anything bad to say about it. I own an X5, I've only had it a few months, but I don't even have anything that I dislike about the X5. So the X7 here, the only thing I will say is I do wish the second and third row had some manual adjustments to them. The automatic stuff is nice. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer than my personal preference. Uh, so I would like to maybe see that, but I know at this exclusivity and luxury level, everything you want, you just wanna be able to push a button and uh, have it do its thing. So that's just a personal preference, but everything else I like, very, very nice materials. Everything is genuine for this price tag. You are getting a lot of premium materials that you won't see in some of the other BMW lineups. That is going to wrap it up though for the 2024 BMW Alpina XB7. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this rare X7 for me today. Check out their website. That link is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.